Many thanks to Gail S., David D., and Mary Jo, uh, and your third time donation, Mary Jo. I think you guys, both you other guys, have done similar multiples. So thank you extremely for your uh, for your kind donations. And now let's talk about uh, something that's been on my mind for a little bit. And um, uh, one of my, my uh, one, a former student, <laughs> Alistair, um, brought to my attention a word heuristic, and I've mentioned it before, but I just but it just kept triggering me because uh, there's a definition of it uh, which is involving or serving as an aid to learning, discovery, or problem solving by experimental, especially trial and error methods. And uh, I, I, that's, you know, there's a psychological term for, the, this is a psychological term also, and it means all sorts of, you know, there are variations that don't precisely mean this, but that's one of the definitions that comes up, I believe, under uh, in, in Merriam-Webster's uh, dictionary. Uh, but this whole idea of, of, of self-teaching by trial and error is such a delightful thing, and but it's not just self-teaching. In fact, I don't even point it mostly at self-teaching, but everyday painting. It's that search. It's a search modality that we make common use of. And I just want to talk a little bit about that uh, with the idea of getting to the point of how you manage law. You see, when it comes up in competition because, uh, composition, I mean, because as as, um, as my mentor, Mr. Gamble, used to say, uh, composition is very personal. And I remember hearing that with frustration. I wanted to hear the laws. You know? <laughs> I wanted to hear about something like maybe a road in or a center of interest or, you know, or something. I wanted to have a discussion from an erudite figure who had conversed with numerous other people about composition and only discover this idea that it's very personal. You could say that could mean it's very intuitive, but it could also mean that because it's very personal, there are no laws. There are no laws governing, um, shall we say, order in a rectangle, visual order in a rectangle. <laughs> and, of course, <clears throat> That doesn't make any sense because some pictures clearly are better than others in those ways. Just randomly piled junk in the middle of a rectangle is, uh, is, is not going to be the same as that piled there, shall we say, with intent. That is, say, with an orderly intent, with an intent to express or to, with an intent to um, um, entertain or, um, uh, or to um, decorate. So... Um, and 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 to be precise, Gamel didn't mean it that way. He meant that there's a part of it that's personal, which is nobody can know your underlying motive in this picture. What is the thing you're after? Say you're looking just at a slice of nature, a landscape. What is it about that? And in fact, for most people who are looking at a landscape, they don't understand what they're looking at frequently. They say, wow, nice, and then they just paint something without getting to the point of understanding what it is as a composition Right, necessarily, and um, but it starts in a very simple way with the with, for example, with the framing. And I'm just going to walk you through um, some just some photographs that I found that were I think they're on my wife's camera <laughs> to, to give credit. Well, uh, one of Miss uh, of her cousin Jean Pierre, who lives in in um, in in France, uh, I think I think I don't know if you do now live in Paris or in Rudeau like uh, Jean Pierre. If you happen to be hearing this, but uh, one of them is of you, another about a couple of others, Iceland, I think. Um, so I thought that might be kind of fun, uh, being an international audience that we are here, <laughs> to talk about those pictures. But I'm just going to walk through them and just do some things, shall we say, intuitively. Um, I'm going to say right from the beginning here that what happens when you when you design pictures, you do it, especially when you know nothing about design. Actually, let me back up a step. When you go to the museum and you pick pictures, if you go in there and look at pictures that design well, you'll have a tendency to, to pick a lot of pictures. And then after a time of looking and looking and looking, you realize that some are better than others, but you don't have any idea why, right? So there's an intuitive reaction. And that's my big point, though, is that you must rely on your intuition, but you're still trying to come up with is, what is the very nature of order in a composition. Now, this is also going to be true of other things as you work in painting, but let's just leave it at that for now. And, you know, um, 
you know, if in a, in a deductive mindset, you know, if you if you perceive some of these things to be uh, values, then you wonder if their application is limited to the one thing we've been talking about, and you're wise if you do, right? So, um, um, so as I said, in heuristic, you know, that idea of of, of trial and error uh, as a means of learning. Uh, it's also a means, as I said, of getting um, a better color note, trial and error, uh, in the search for the relationships and in the search for the color qualities. So, um, so, so I'm saying some of these things similarly apply in other things, but I'm talking today particularly about composition just because it's easy to get through, or maybe is. <laughs> we'll try and find out. So I'm going to show you a couple of images here, and I'm going to uh, bring out my brilliant laser. So the image, the big image, um, the photograph came back on the left. The one on the left is what came back uh, from this trip. Uh, anybody who's been to Iceland is probably at this time of year or whatever has probably been on this on this uh, uh, stairway, which my wife said was very icy and felt quite dangerous. And uh, but in some for some reason they were going up into this. Maybe it was a viewing platform. I don't recall what she said. Nevertheless, it, I was very impressed by it as a as a composition when I first saw it. And now, when I start talking about trial and error, what I'm really trying to tell you to do is, is, is use judgment, but you can't use judgment. You look at it and you say, well, nice. But when you're talking trial and error, for example, you can say, well, but what if we tried it this way? What if we tried it that way? And, and then your, your sense of things actually has a uh, platform, I don't know, a platform, a point of departure, right? You say, oh, now, which is better, this or that, this or that. And then you're going to come up with, now, why would that be? Why is this better than that? Now, I'm not, talk, not going to tell you that ex, in terms of expression, uh, one thing is better than another. Um, you, there are things that cannot be said if without this big gap, with this big airspace here, which is somewhat threatening. This, this doesn't have that when I shrink it to this scale, right? So that's expressive stuff. So depending on what you're trying to communicate, there's still things you would do slightly differently with the composition, say, in this area here, um, but uh, potentially. But I'm not going to get into teaching composition here. I'm just going to give you a sort of a taste. So you can see that what I did initially is I just said to myself, oh, okay, so there's the composition. I didn't change the top or bottom, but I, I said, Let's, what's it like if we slide the center of interest area, this dominant spot here, if we slide that to the right or, or move it further right, right? So you see me do it here. I just drew the side of the composition in, right, you know, right to, where did I bring it? Right to about here, right? You can see that? And I wound up with this composition. Now, you have two different compositions now. This one now looks like it has a big empty space in it, right? This one has the darks dominating the picture. This one has the lights dominating the picture. So you can see the difference in multiple ways. There's all kinds of interesting different ways. Now, by, sh by shrinking the scale, the, the size of the area around the picture, you can see that what we've done is made the center more, more important. We've made, we've made this group of people more important. This, there's a famous discussion about whether that's a figure in a landscape or a landscape with figures. And here you have a landscape with figures more so, at least, than when you get here. It begins to be more figures than a landscape. And in, in, in subsequent ones, I'll, I'll bring that even closer. But you'll see what I mean. Those are various aspects. The aspects of composition, by the way, that we're talking about, we're talking about changing the frame. The frame is horizontal here, it's vertical here. So it's, you know, it's called landscape versus portrait in your little uh, typewriter program. Um, anyway, let's just keep on pushing. So on this one over here, I said, well, but what if we move it even further? I don't think I changed top or bottom, no. But you can see that I moved this, I, I made this gap even smaller. So I narrowed the picture even more. And that brings the weight of this group of people to the right. It just sets the whole thing over. This one here feels now, when you compare these two side by side, it feels like this one could be set on, this one up here on the right, could be said to maybe be too heavy to the left still. And it's a funny thing, what does that mean? But what I'm getting at with all this stuff is you start saying to yourself, are there laws about this? And I don't mean to say are there laws written in a book somewhere. I mean to say are there best practices? Uh, is this picture, now there's a word like equilibrium comes up. Is, is this picture in equilibrium? Or is it tending to fall? Now, that's, the word equilibrium is in the class of a law, right? And we, the, historically, the, the conversations about um, composition typically have this word in them, or a word like repose. 
All of which means the picture shouldn't look like it's all one-sided and going to fall out, you know, and, and have empty gaps that feel funny, you know, uncomfortable stuff like that. But it, it hangs around this word balance, equilibrium, repose. Uh, and uh, there's a sense in which this one, the further right you get, the more it has of it. But what is that thing, right? So how do people learn those things? I'm saying that they move pictures around, they move the frame around, move the frame around, and they intuitively began to grasp, you know, this is different from that. What is this thing? What is this thing? And they began to come up with, first of all, names of things, like the idea of equilibrium. And then based on intuition, then they would be, but they'd always be searching for best practices or what we'd call laws, right? So a big part of what I'm saying to you in this conversation is saying, look, just do trial and error. Do a lot of looking, looking, searching, searching. Don't take the first thing you see and say how pretty that is. Take the first thing you see and then adjust it this way and adjust it that way and then compare, 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 compare until there's no decision to be made. Thank you, John Pazwar, for that. If you happen to be hearing this, you'll love your mom for that reason. <laughs> now, so everything we've seen so far has the center of interest areas toward it, from the middle down, right? So what I've done over here is I've moved the whole center of interest up. Well, to do that, I had to shrink the top of the picture. I didn't change the bottom, but I had to shrink the top. So now you can see that I've really brought the center in closer. I kept this position, but I dropped the top down now. What I did that for was to say, how does this feel when I elevate the area of greatest interest, when I elevate it? Now, Gamble had a name for that spot. He called it, and, and you, shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be worried about these names. You should be thinking about, are you thinking about placement in a page as a thing, right? Because all we're talking about is management of a rectangle. And uh, so here we can see the placement of the center of interest area, the area of the greatest interest, the dominant interest, you'd say. Even that's an idea, right? Just an idea, just a word. Uh, and, but you're going to play with it because your eyes, you can't take your eyes off this. You don't even know why you can't. But, but so now we've just elevated that and, uh, and to a spot that is closer to what Gamel called the noble half. Well, it's in now what he would call the noble half of the picture, right? So, and I've talked about that before, but you know, the idea of elevating the subject up into the picture has a different effect from demoting it. Like this, this is low in the picture and creates a whole different sense of things than when you elevate it. Now, that is much more apparent in a portrait where you sink the sitter down below you and lay, you begin to look like you're looking down on the sitter, as opposed to elevating the sitter's head maybe even slight above your, slightly above your level and making them into the, shall we say, the queen or the king in terms of that little universe you're creating. I hope this is of value to you. Uh, I'm just going to run through with the rest of these, and, and hopefully we can do this without taking the rest of our lives. But you see what I've done now is I've taken all these pictures and I've turned them into horizontals. So we can, we can again glance back. See, remember the original here with all the airspace. We have a, a, a dark moving up into a midtone into dark again, and we have lights on both sides of that, right? Um, but you see the bigger picture here. It's basically a light picture. And the more close in we get, the more it becomes something else. The general tonality is a word we use. Now, is that a word you've heard of? But it's a naming thing. You begin to realize, this is, a, is this a light picture or a dark picture? By the time you get down to here, this is no longer a light picture, is it? or even over here. Now, this is the one where I was talking to you about, so is this a figure with landscapes or is it a landscape with figure? Now, if you're a guy like Millet, you really want to, to let the figures talk. You want their gestures. Their gestures really want to be everything. And with certain other kinds of painters, like Leighton, you want this patterning. You love the patterning, the, 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 the shapes and the expression created by cutouts. I mean patterning that way. I mean silhouettes, shall we say, so as not to confuse. <clears throat> but... Um, so you can see there's this, the weight has really, really come over this way here. Now we have a major mass balancing, and the whole subject now becomes this whole major dark mass balanced by this one, you know, setting off, set off against this one. And that doesn't come across as much with this. I mean, this is truly a big mass set off by a little one over here. But this one, when you get into the figures here, it's much more apparent, isn't it, that we're having very dominant spots, very dominant dark spots. The two dark spots begin to dominate this picture. Now, here's this idea of, oh, so what is that? This just happened there, you know? But that was where we came in close. And some people would say the intimate view when you come in close and you can see the tear in the sitter's eye if you're talking about movies or something like that. Um, in any case, what you can see is these, how many variations on these things you can do. I really went out of my way to move this to the right. You know, I kept going right, or, right and right and right and right. And so the center is now very definitely right, where here it's actually still left. 
and here it's a little right, right? But you can see the differences are gradually getting, um, are getting, are, the differences are, are beginning to give you something, right? So is this picture a better picture within, in being higher or lower, more left, more right, more close up, or more back? And you can see that it's very dominated by that thing we're calling the center of interest thing. But also you can see that in these various groupings, you can see there's a mood change in these things. There's a different feeling entirely from between this and the and the and the one before it. This one, there's a sense of this is what a lot of the uh, Hudson River School likes to do. You know, give this great sense of the world is big and man isn't so big. A little bit of the Japanese painters, the landscape painters, like to do that as well and have their codes about it. And uh, even this one where it's all elevated and giving you a very high feeling, there's a whole different quality. But notice how the feelings change in here. Well, that's the one thing that. I call that, that's, that's an element of what I call the poetic and that, that what the felt stuff. And once you sense something like that, you want to figure out how you can maintain that. Uh, if that's what you really care about, if that's that thing that really touches you, if that thing you really want to talk about, that's in terms of expression again, though. So for the purposes of expression, uh, you'll get at one thing by making a vast landscape with little tiny people and get an entirely different feeling by coming in close up here and you start seeing the muscles on bodies, you know, and the, and the, and the crudeness of the wood or whatever, you know what I mean, all that stuff. Um, so, but these are discussions that, so you're looking at these things, moving these things around and wondering and wondering and wondering and trying to understand what is the nature of this thing? What is the nature of composition? And I'm saying that your intuition, this interplay, this original heuristic activity is the beginning of your search for the laws that you are going to... Uh, um, form for yourself. And I, there again, that word formula comes in, right? You know, Yang said once you can't, with about formulas, you can't work with them, you can't work without them. <laughs> and I do like that discussion. But it's not so much that you have to work from a formula, but you've got to get to know the names of things. Like the word spotting, the distribution of spots, or, or, or classes of values. This picture has, 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 a, has a major light going through the picture right here. And it's got a middle tone into a dark going through here, but the darkest dark is here. The middle tone is here. You could maybe argue that then you have other levels. If you blow your eyes, this is pretty much the same value as this one. But you can talk about the, the proportions of these value units, right? And, uh, but that's the classification of the major values. And then there's this discussion about... Um, and by the way, that's after you have the discussion about the general tonality of the pictures. There's a dark picture, a light picture, a middle tone picture. Uh, I'm just saying that these are the kinds of things you're going to be that are, should be running through your head if you just listen, just wonder, just move a frame around, and ask different questions, ask 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 well, how this picture is different from that one. Is it better or not better? And and what makes it so? And is is it saying the same thing or is it saying something different? This is the exploratory modality which you want to get into, uh, rather than just working from somebody's rule book who says do this and do that. Even when I'm working with students, they're always looking for me to give them a set of the rules. <laughs> and so, you know, the, the only two rules really that, value, that, we, that I value are it's got to be interesting and it's got to be unified. It's got to find its unity. And, and I don't have other ones, but that's just, you have to figure, even figure that out, though. Is that true? What is the very, net, what is the very definition of composition? Why, why, why does it have to have unity? Or why does it have to be interesting? Why can't it just be boring? <laughs> so you know, get right down to the to the to the to the core. What is the very nature of this thing? Now I'm taking you. This is a different spot in Iceland, and um, they were in a car or a bus, maybe taking pictures out the windows, probably, or maybe they'd stopped here. Um, but you can see the image on the left, which I probably should have made much bigger. Um, and I don't know. Mr. Producer, I definitely was trying, wasn't trying to lose my face on this one, but I don't mind if we do. Uh, but, but this is the, bit, the, the original shot. You can see big, the person doing this wanted you really to see a little bit like the Hudson River School, that the whole great world that God's created, that sort of thing. But compositionally, that is composition meaning that what happens in a rectangle uh, is, is that larger discussion about, oh, suppose we did this, what if we tried that, right? And then you begin to teach yourself composition. You begin to teach yourself uh, uh, about things like placement on the page, proportions of a frame, 
whether it should be horizontal or vertical and how much so and what should be cut off, you know, exits, things like that. You begin to start seeing those things. So you can see the first thing I did with this one here, I believe, was I left everything intact. I just dropped the top, just lowered this way down and said to myself, what would happen if I... You see, by the way, this is a 50-50 picture. It's like half light and half dark. And that's one of those things. Is that a good thing to have a picture split in half like that? Does that feel good? Or does it feel good to have the light portion be be smaller than the great than the big portion and the other way around? I never quite did it the other way around. It would have been done well to pull this thing up and shrink the dark and let this light stay big. That's part of the exploration. But you want to trial and error all these things and begin to try to understand what you've got. You see what I'm saying? Instead of coming up, you know, instead of trying to work with laws, you're trying to actually find out if there are laws and what the laws are. And you only try, I suggest that the best way to find that out is heuristically, that is, say, by trial and error. And um, so here we are. We just dropped the top down. Now, look how the total focus. We lost this, all this air up here, but we brought ourselves to look here. Now we're looking in a different place. Instead of this being just a, sort of an afterthought, sort of part of the big scheme, this is now becoming much more important, and this area in particular is becoming suddenly way more important, way more dominating. And um, uh, and then the next thing I did is I took the same shot as this one, and I moved this piece over to the right. You can see I just brought the right edge over here. I brought it over a little bit. Now, I was asking myself a question. This felt gappy over here to me. It didn't feel good. I didn't like that feeling. Now, what is that feeling? Is that a good or bad thing? What does that mean, though? What's the definition of what is that? So is that, is that repose? Is that the distribution that I was talking about that has to do with equilibrium? And so the spots, and, and, and what's the role of spots like this? What happens if it's over here? Why, why is it better over here? Is it better over here? Uh, it does something different, but that's what you're trying to figure out. There's so many other things you're eventually going to run into, like the order of effects, but spotting is one, just the distribution of spots. But what we did here, we suddenly almost brought ourselves back to having the, the uh, darks, I mean, having the lights, 50-50 again, but just not quite. Just not quite. We're still heavier on the darks and less so on the lights. And we start saying to ourselves, is there a proportion thing that's better than an, you know, is, so that we have, we, you run into a thing called the laws of equality. Well, you're trying to prove that now. You said to yourself, is it better equal? The more, you know, or is it better? Or, and, and then to what degree should it be papa bear, mama bear, baby bear by size? You know, the dark, the light, or the middle tone, or the or whatever the distribution is that happens here. So this is getting to be a pleasing one. Here's the little spot. <laughs> here's the great light spot. And then here's the great dark here. And we could just talk about that as, as uh, in terms of, of the general impression and ask ourselves whether the other ones are better this way or better that way. And then finally, and by the way, well, on this one here, I also brought the bottom way up. Actually, I, I go back. I want you to go back. This one here comes out of this one, and I brought the uh, top even further down, really further down, so the darks really own this picture now. And you can see how that really features this spot, really, really brings our attention to this spot, with this being an after spot. Really, really brought our attention to that spot, though, didn't it? And then I go up to here, and that's when I move the side over, and I bring the bottom up, right? So I'm now lowering that, I'm changing back to something closer to this in terms of the proportions. And I'm just asking myself, what's better and why? What's better and why? I keep asking myself, what's better and why? Well, there's two whys that I found, and I'm just saying you might notice these two. One is that there's a different feeling when you do it. And then another one is just that the, the thing is in better equilibrium. You know, it's in better, dis the, the spotting is better. The distribution of the effects. Um, by the way, instead of talking about just light spots and dark spots, pictures are like this one, frequent, not infrequent, to have dark spots in a light area, light spots in a dark area. It winds up being considerably more about the power of effects, which is why I talked about this and then this. You can see that we have in sense of power sense, we have this and this, and a third thing maybe here. You see how there's, there's the priorities for the visual impression? We don't know that, but we just, we're just noticing if we blur our eyes down, that, you know, there are three places the eyes want to go because they have contrast. Oh, now, are you just saying that, Paul? Are you creating laws now? <laughs> but you're going to have to sort this out. Look at it and wonder. Look at it and wonder. Wonder, wonder. And do pay attention. You will see that you need to pay attention to things like the movement of the eye. Where does my eye go? It's, why should I ask that? I don't know, because your eye does do something. Why do we even have a word like center of interest? What is the definition of that? 
Well, do it by this feeling. And you'll notice that your eyes are more attracted here, more attracted here, and all of a sudden you change the frame and your eyes are more attracted there. What is that? What is that stuff we're talking about? But they're elements of the visual world. And I'm just saying, look at look at look it over, think it through, and what, and then let yourself come up with ideas related to if then, right? So if that's true, then composition has to do with this and has to do with that. So here I've done. This is the original picture. This is Jean Pierre. Hi Jean, <laughs> Jean Pierre. Uh, this this. Um, who I mercilessly took to a movie when he didn't understand very good English in New York, and I and and I found out much later that he, you, if you're there, jump here, uh, had a hard time with the movie. I thought it would have been such a good, easy one or good one for you to <laughs> to enjoy, not knowing how much English you knew. Anyway, so that's a funny story um, for another time. But um, so here you have a picture. The original shot is this one. It's just down this this staircase, woods in the background, snowy day. Uh, and uh, I think we were about to take a hike. He was trying out some boots, um, and we were about to take a little hike in the woods. And um, so, but here you can see what you have. You can see have interesting things. There's a dark here, a dark here, and a, and, a, and a light in the middle, right? So three stripes, like a flag, like a French flag, I don't know. And then there's a dot right in the middle. I mean, you could say that, right? I mean, that's a way of describing what you're seeing in front of you. Now, if you're talking about the composition the way I am, uh, remember now, I'm an eyeball, and this is now. Watch out for this because this is this. The old school composition was telling a story. So here's this guy running to something, right? You could say it's that. So does he? Where is he going? And does that show? And does it tell this? Does it tell the story effectively? What I'm talking about now is 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 impressionist uh, composition, which has to do with the distribution of value spots and the play of shape and everything visual, right? Endlessly about visual stuff. So much so that you'd see a thing like this, see this sort of hairy, fingery thing, and then you see some of them up here, and you see some of that up here. Those are just abstractions that relate to each other. If you look at Degas, you'll begin to know what I mean. Or you have vertical posts here, and you might see that there's another one somewhere, maybe here, even these verticals up here. They begin to talk and play. Interplay. There's an interplay between those, isn't there? Well, what's that? That's, that's from long looking at pictures and wondering what this is. I would say again in the abstract, uh, but that's what we do. It's just the visual, the interplay of visual content. Well, what we did with this picture here, let's see what we did first. I think the first thing I did is I said, well, naturally, let's eliminate the top. And I think that's what this is over here. I just dragged everything down. I lost some of this too. So let's, let's go to this one. I eliminated a lot of the top. So you can see I brought this way down to about here. And I wound up with three different sized darks. This one being barely different from that one, but as a feeling of three different sized darks instead of being three fairly even feeling darks, right? Now you sort out if there's such a thing as better or less better, and I'm talking about visual interest. We talk about things like variety, you know, and that whole thing about paint design being unity with variety. Read Kenyon Cox, or almost anybody you want to read uh, who talks about this. I think Solomon talks about it in his book. Um, but I'm not looking for you to have words in your head and try to build pictures on them. I'm looking for us to get intuitively, to review things intuitively and say, which is better, this or that, this or that, this or that, and then wonder why, at which point you come up with laws, and, and laws of relationship is what you're going to come up with if you're an impressionist. But no matter which way, uh, you're still going to come up with laws of relationship. But so you can see what I did there. Then I cropped it even lower on the top, and but I didn't change this. This figure is center. It's centered. And it gets more obvious here that it's like a pyramid. It's just like right in the middle. So at that point, there's something about that that I didn't like, I said to myself, and I'm going to try by just pulling the left side in. Didn't change anything else. And now I have a whole different movement of darks through this picture. And now I begin to wonder what the heck that is in pictures. So uh, do you, you follow where I'm going with this? So this whole discussion is just about the intuitive leading and the, and the by a heuristic trial and error process, leading in the entire process of trying to find your own formula, it's trying to find your own, are there laws? Are there, are things, are certain things better than others? The laws is a funny word, you know, like the law of inequality as expressed by Henry Poor, who Gamble called Poor Poor. Um, I forget what his book is on composition, it's called Composition, I think. Um, Pierce is better, uh, what is uh, Charles, no, um, What's Pierce's first name? Cyril Pierce. I find that to be a little better book on composition. And then um, there's a photographer who did one on composition, who's Saga Mucci or somebody or other. But he um, he's taken on that. He's an American who's taken on that name, and I've forgotten what the name of his book is. But he 
he, he shows a few of these things. And, but your job is to actually manipulate. You have this chance. You know, and that's one of the things about photography in our day. You can just take pictures and then manipulate them and look at them and wonder what they do and what, what makes one more interesting than the other. And I'm suggesting you work that way. You do want to be more interesting. This is one of those things I can just say categorically. You want to be more interesting than you were yesterday. And if you're trying to sell pictures, you want to be more interesting than the guy next to you, <laughs> right? And it's not so much about comparing yourself with the neighbor, but, but when you're on a wall, of course, you want your picture to be the one that they buy, right? <laughs> so there's whole many, so have many, many other discussions about, about composition. But I'm just suggesting to this whole idea of trial and error just by way of talking about composition. And you should think about it in every other way and wonder about how you self-teach. How do you turn yourself into a better painter? Somebody, one of my people, uh, one of the people I talked to here on the videos has, been, has sent me some shots, and it's very clear that he's evolving his skills. Uh, as he sh but he can tell as he puts his images side by side by side on the floor and takes a photograph of them, as I did with Gamble, suggested by Gamble, and you begin to see this better than that. You don't know why, but you, well, you may, you may immediately know why. I shouldn't say you don't. But, um, uh, but you'll get hints from those people who've been painting and all that sort of thing. But you've got to prove those things. You have to work them out with your own practice, with your own review. Uh, when, some, when you see a composition, somebody's a great composition, just see if you can move it and make it better. See if you can move a part inside it and make it better. Try. You can see that Degas was evidently trying to do that. So that's all I have to say on this one. And I, I hope you get some sort of a... a pick me up in terms of just being willing to try things. And, you know, laws aren't written stupidly. The guys who are writing what we call laws, the laws of inequality, these people are experienced painters. They've come to terms with things and they've heard things, but the only way you can speak authoritatively is if you've worked it out by experience, the experiential, right? So you got to do that and trial and error is your friend, okay? Even in terms of best practices, by the way, which we'll do in the next video. All right, I'll leave it at that. And uh, what, what, so, uh, we're not, we're pretty good. So again, thank you, uh, uh, Gail, David, and, uh, and Mary Jo. And uh, thank you all uh, for all that you bring to us, the comments, very, especially, I really appreciate those kind ones lately. And, uh, but I don't mind the contentious ones. I, I like to have points to talk about. And the next video we do is gonna be about one of those points. A big question that comes up uh, related to, um, uh, do you have to learn to draw before you can use color and that sort of thing? All right. So let's leave it at that. Wish you guys have, hope you have a very nice week and uh, enjoy the chill temperatures. Uh, if you're in areas like mine, uh, today we're in the minuses. <laughs> I can only wish you well and hope you stay warm and have a really nice painting week. All right. Next time.